Folks, welcome to Vector Calculus. All right, folks, so welcome back to the next lecture on vector calculus. So here we have on the screen, you can see three pictures of hyperbolas. So today we're going to try to understand the three different ways of looking at hyperbolas. So first, let's look at the first way. So this is a hyperbola right here in the wild, uh, straight from, from Desmos. As you can see, my username is Starman. Now, every hyperbola has some special features. OK, so here are the three special things that every hyperbola has. Okay, so every hyperbola is going to have number one, a center. So this is the, this is something every hyperbola is going to have a center, right? If you don't have a center, you don't have a hy hyperbola. Okay, uh, hyperbolas also have foci, right? You have one focus here. Oh, here's one focus. Here's another focus. So every hyperbola has a focus. And finally, every hyperbola is going to have, is going to have uh, vertices. So here's uh, here's one vertex. Here's another vertex. Okay. So I can, you can see I I'm shading in the vertices in red. So just for clarity, for clarification purposes, I can write those down. This in green is the focus. We call it we call it the focus of the hyperbola. In red, in red we have the vertex. This is the vertex of the hyperbola. And finally, in yellow. I have the center, the center of my hyperbola. So you can see I've got those three uh, properties, those three things that every hyperbola has is a focus, vertex, and a center. Okay, well that's pretty easy, that's not too bad. And now let's look at the second picture of the hyperbola. Once again, let's put in our three things, right? What are the three things we have? We have, uh, what color did I use? We have the focus, vertex, and center. So, so uh, my focus, my focus is right here. Here's the focus of my hyperbola. And I'm just estimating here. Here's the focus of my hyperbola. Next up is the vertex of my hyperbola. Here's the vertex. And finally, we have the center, the center of my hyperbola. Now, if I zoom in, let's go ahead and check out some of the different things we can say about the parabola. Here's the second view you should know. So the distance from the center of the hyperbola to this vertex, we like to call that distance what? We call that distance a, right? Remember, it was the same thing in the ellipse. And this distance from this distance from the center of the hyperbola to the focus, from the center to the focus, that's going to be c. Okay, that's going to be the the variable c represents that distance from the center of the hyperbola to one of the foci, one of the foci. So we have A, we have C. You're probably wondering where B is. Well, that's where the third picture of the hyperbola comes in. So hopefully you, you understand the first two pictures. The first picture is just easy, right? We have three different parts for every hyperbola. A focus, a vertex, and a, dia and a center. We also have, for every per hyperbola, we have uh, a length A between, between what two things? Between the center and the vertex and a, and a length c between the center and this and this focus so every every hyperbola is going to have that and finally finally we come over here what, what's over here well uh, over here we have once again this hyperbola is going to have three different things what are the three different things this hyperbola is going to have well look back to your pictures look back to the previous picture number one it's going to have some foci some foci over here here's one foci Here's another focus. And then it's going to have some vertices. Here's one vertex. Here's another vertex. And finally, it's going to have a center. So here's here's the center of the hyperbola. And now, so if I zoom in over here, if I zoom into this picture over here, you can hopefully get a feel of what's happening here, right? You can hopefully get a feel of what, what the hyperbola actually is. So now, now what I want to do is tell you what the difference between a hyperbola and a parabola is. There happens to be a pretty big difference and if you really want to understand how the hyperbola is unique, we need to understand what's different between the hyperbola and the parabola. So what's different is that a hyperbola has an asymptote. An asymptote. So here, let me go ahead and draw the asymptote of the hyperbola. Here's was one asymptote and here's another asymptote. Unlike a parabola, 
uh, hyperbola does indeed have an asymptote and that's what makes it so different and so using this asymptote we can actually construct a box right we can actually construct a box so let's let's do that so this over here this over here is going to be uh, you can kind of think of it in, as an axis of the hyperbola in fact it is the axis i believe it's the conjugate axis and then that's going to be our one of our axes but then we're also going to have another axis right so another axis okay another axis like that that goes perpendicular to the axis we have right now so that axis that secondary axis is going to look like that now you see i'm repeatedly trying to kind of get this axis right okay so let's see if i can do it let's see if i can draw it correctly so we're almost there so here's our axis here's our third and final axis and this third and final axis is going to help us kind of construct a box around our hyperbola okay and the the centers of this box the corners of this box are going to serve as points that help us draw the asymptote of the hyperbola okay so now i can actually show you what my a and b values are okay this distance from the center of my hyperbola to my vertex to my vertex that distance over here this distance over here is going to be a but then again i'm going to have my other distance right if this is a what is this over here well that's going to be my b that's going to be my b and this over here as a matter of fact that longer axis that you can see this longer axis that's called the transverse axis okay and that's going to be twice two times b okay and finally just using this uh, picture, we can actually find the slope of the asymptotes of the hyperbola. What's that slope going to be? Well, clearly you can see the rise over run here, right? Hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. You can see the rise of the hyperbola. Whoops, let's take yellow. You can see the rise of the hyperbola as B and the run as A. So that means the slope, the slope of this, um, of this, of this hyperbola's asymptote over here, the slope is going to be B over A for the for the upwards for the upwards asymptote and alternatively for the asymptote going down we're going to have a slope of minus b over a okay now let's go ahead and review all three pictures of of the hyperbola remember the first picture the first picture was the focus vertex center picture right every hyperbola has three parts it has a focus a vertex and a center and of course after that every hyperbola has two more things right it has a distance it has a distance over here that we call a this a is going to represent the distance from from the center of the hyperbola to the vertex and of course there's another length let's call that c that's going to be the distance from the center to one of the foci okay and finally finally we have the last picture of the hyperbola and that last picture is this kind of box picture right this box picture whoops kind of glitching out here but this box picture here tells us that every hyperbola has a kind of box, right? It has a kind of box, and uh, if you construct that box the right way, uh, whoops, <laughs> if you construct that box the right way, you can actually graph the asymptotes of your hyperbola. Okay, so if, you, if we zoom in over here, what do we find? We find that our hyperbola has a box, and the width of this box is going to be 2b. The width of this box is 2b. The length of this box is 2a and if we connect if we go ahead and connect these two corners of the box we're going to get one of the asymptotes one of the asymptotes of our hyperbola and the other asymptote whoops the other asymptote of our hyperbola okay and those asymptotes are going to have slopes of b over a and minus b over a respectively uh, the final thing i want to mention is pretty simple right eccentricity eccentricity what is eccentricity well eccentricity is a measurement of how fat or skinny a hyperbola is so for example for example if i have a fat hyperbola like this its eccentricity is measured by c over a remember c is the distance from the center to the foci and a is the distance from the center to the vertex okay now if c over a if c over a is very close to one what's going to happen so here we see that a hyperbola with very high eccentricity, very high eccentricity, is going to essentially become a line, right? The smaller the hyperbola's eccentricity, the closer the 
hyperbola z centricity is to one, the more uh, a kind of uh, slanted it is. On the other hand, the more uh, the farther away the hyperbola z centricity is from one, the more straight or uh, line uh, hyperbola is. So let's go ahead and check out an actual hyperbola here. So here's an actual hyperbola. You can see that as I adjust my a value, the eccentricity of my hyperbola changes, right? So what happens as I increase my a value? As I increase my a value, as I increase the a value of my hyperbola, you can see the eccentricity decreases, right? Eccentricity decreases as I increase my a value. On the other hand, if I increase b, what happens? Well, my hyperbola gets kind of straighter. Once again, my eccentricity is going to change. As I increase my b value, my hyperbola eccentricity increases. For a hyperbola, our c squared is actually going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. Unlike the ellipse, where you instead had c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. That was for the ellipse. For the hyperbola, that turns out to be the wrong relationship. Instead, for the hyperbola, we have that c squared is a squared plus b squared. All right, folks, thanks for watching this lecture on vector calculus. We'll check you out.